Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brand Ambassador. And guess what? We have got a fabulous panel for you today, kicking off National Surging Month. So I would just like to know in the comments, do you have a serger, number one? Two, is it still in the box? Because I can probably guarantee half of you are going to say yes, <laughs> only because mine was in the box for a long time before I decided to pull that out of the box and it never went back. So we have a great show for you today. If you've never been here before, we are live streaming on Brother Sewing YouTube, Facebook pages. We can see all of your comments. Say hi. I'm going to go grab the crew and we will be right back. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March now. <gasps> I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. <gasps> I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. So, as I promised, is this just a fabulous panel <laughs> or what? We've got Kathy Stipe, Kathy Gandy, Jerry Granada, and Sarah Vetzer, and we are going to be talking about surging. So everyone say hi real quick in case nobody has met you yet and they're new to the brother party. Why don't we start with you, Kathy Stipe? Hi, I'm Kathy and I've been a brother educator for about five years now. I live in rainy Florida along with another <laughs> one of our um, guests. <laughs> <laughs> I think I drove right by your house this weekend. <laughs> I should have beeped. Oh. <laughs> All right, Kathy Gandy. Hi, I'm Kathy Gandy. I've been a ed brother educator for about five, six years, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. Jerry? Hello, I'm Jerry Granada. I've been a brother educator for, again, about five years, as same as some of the others. Uh, I live in Palm Springs, California, where it was a very chilly 95 today. Um, and I live with me and Hercules. So those of you who know Hercules, he says hi to everybody out there. I don't hear him snoring yet, though. I'm very, uh, well, but if you hear snoring, just know it's not us. <laughs> All right. He's, he's outside, so we're good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Vetzer. I've been a brother educator for just over a year now, and I'm coming to you from Brooklyn, New York. Awesome. Welcome to the party. So we are going to be talking surging today. And so the job today is not necessarily show you tutorials. They're going to show you samples they've made with the serger, give you an idea of what stitches you have. So get that serger out of the box, pull the manual out. Throughout this whole month, we'll be giving you some a little details on how to do some of these, but it's all in your manual too. And brother has a ton of videos. So we thought today would be an inspiration day, give you some ideas for home deck, garments, gifts. Sarah, your could, yours could even be more than gifts. <laughs> so... Why don't we start with Jerry? Jerry, take it off. Well, I'm I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to talk about surging. And you know, a lot of people will come at surging from all different angles. Um, a lot of people are intimidated by them. And you know, it, it, a lot of that could be the old myths that we carry with us. You know, you probably have heard the horror stories about the older surgers that would take half a day to thread. You've probably seen the memes with the, the person covered in thread saying, I'll be there in a minute. I'm just I'm just threading my serger. Those days are gone. Those myths are completely busted. Um, I I come at surging from an, an angle of I like to see um most people will use them for garments, but you know, they're, they're so much more than that. And there's so much more to a serger. Now, yes, you can do garments. Um, the one thing that makes serging so great is it makes all your projects so fast and so easy. A serger is so quick to get things done. So if you're limited on time, that may be a great way to break out your serger and just get these projects done. So yes, you can do garments. A lot of people think that serging is just for garments. And here's a shirt that I had made and I'll just kind of open the inside. And you can kind of see here on the edges where I have overlocked the edges using a serger. And that's a very common way. This whole thing was constructed 
on a serger. And yes, it was fast and it was very easy, but a serger is so much more. So let's get into some other things you can do with serging. Um, if you uh, have uh, gifts that you want to make really quickly, or you want to make some something for yourself very quickly, you have a dinner party coming or the holidays are coming. I know holidays, that can be a four letter word for people, but it is coming <laughs> nonetheless. Every year it happens the same time. <laughs> so let's get ready for it and do it quick and easy. Now, this is a very small sample, but this could represent a little napkin. Now I've used in the upper loopers, I've used a, a decorative metallic thread. And those of you who own a serger and own decorative thread, this is a great way to use them. The loopers do not go through the needle. Um, they're just held down by the needle. So, so in a way you're kind of couching the decorative thread down. That's the overlock part is the loopers. So you can put in all of those heavy decorative threads that you can't put through your needle, put them in the loopers. And all of a sudden you have these sparkly, wonderful threads that you can use. Now this represents like a little napkin. Um, I have put wrong sides together. So the right sides are out and you could use decorative thread in the lower looper as well. Um, and so you can make these any size that you want to. Uh, so all it is is just two pieces of fabric that are wrong sides together. Usually we do right sides, but on the serger, you usually do wrong sides together. And that's uh, when you're doing decorative stuff. So that's the way that I, I use them for, for like napkins. Very quick, very easy. You could do a whole set of napkins in a matter of minutes, literally. Um, another thing that you could do is, again, I like to use a serger on the outside. So this is just a, just a decorative sample that I put together. Um, I use decorative stitching and I should have used contrasting thread, <laughs> but I went to my uh, sewing machine and I stitched this down using a decorative thread. But then on the edges, I used a decorative serger thread or just a decorative. I think this was a 12 weight that I put through the loopers because remember, they're not going through the thread. So you can use those thicker, thicker threads here. Um, and I played with the differential feed and we'll talk about that. I'm sure as we go, what the differential feed is, but that gave sort of a texture on the edges. So again, these are, these are kind of three dimensional. Uh, wouldn't this be great on like a tote bag or make a, a shirt or a jacket or something out of this? So these are three dimensional. And again, you can use decorative threads in the upper and lower loopers. Um, and so that's just another way. Another way is quilting. <clears throat> Many of you who have seen me on Angela's show recognize the quilt that's behind me. This is the first quilt that I ever made. But what I've probably not talked about is that quilt is surged. I came from quilting as a, a garment sewer and a costumer. Um, so I my serger was all warmed up and ready to go. So I surged that quilt behind me. So that's all surged. And it went together fast, really fast, because um, that's what I was familiar with. So just to take a little sample block, um, again, those of you who know me know my use of unusual fat, my use of unusual fabrics is high on my list. So I've got some lame in here. This is really a simple nine block that doesn't look like a nine block um, because of the way I put it together. But on the back, you'll see that I surge this together. Now this busts that myth that, oh, you can't surge a quilt because it's too bulky. That is not true at all. You can quilt through this. Um, actually, it kind of makes your seams lay a little flatter than they normally would because you don't have all that bulk. The, the overlock is actually compressing those seams and those edges, so there's actually less bulk. Um, so another thing I, I can do is I can do quilting on the outside. So these are some diamonds that I put together. And I took the edges and uh, they're exposed. These are exposed seams. So instead of right sides together, I put my pieces wrong sides together so that the surging was on the outside. So again, using a decorative thread. And then I went all around the outside with the, the decorative thread and the serger. And again, very quick and easy. This would be a great gift for uh, like a candle, uh, candle mat or a little table runner or something, you know, something for your table. And on the back, you can see, again, it's very clean. Um, because it was all pieced, you know, and you see a little bit of the little bit of the serger there, but that's that's what you want. Now, again, you can back this with another piece of fabric right side out. So you can serge this again, putting wrong sides together. You can serge the whole thing and have, you know, take care of of your decorative edging and your your decorative backing all at the same time. So that's these are just I mean, the 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 possibilities are really endless. And it, the, the really only the limit is your creativity and your imagination. Those are so inspiring. I'm just thinking of, we just finished National Quilt Month, and I'm thinking of so many more things looking at that silver metallic with your quilting. I love it. I should have known that would have come out of your <laughs> Shocking, I know. <laughs> so I'm just laughing. I see a lot of questions and comments. I'll get to those in a minute. But I'm laughing at your first comment about all the thread everywhere. 
And I have to confess, my first surger was right out of college. That was like in the early 90s. And there's no YouTube at that time that I knew of. <laughs> Maybe yeah. there was, but I was behind schedule. <laughs> and I had nothing. The manual, I didn't even, I didn't understand. And I literally used that surger. And I tell the story because now it's really funny. It wasn't really funny then, but <laughs> I used that serger until the white thread ran out of the looper and I took it back to the dealer that my mom bought it from and said, I want a new serger with black thread. <laughs> I, I too come from that background. I've got so many horror stories in my first serger. I mean, it was just, once you got it threaded, it worked great. But again, you had to do them in a certain order and you, you know, God forbid something got out of order because it would just be a night you have to start all over again. And it took half a day to thread. You had to try to get your finger or tweezer way into that lower looper. And it was just so frustrating. But those days are gone. It's so They're much, gone. So we are easy. into a new century or yep. maybe a couple since then, but <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I see a few comments rolling in and and you can ask your questions too, because we'll get to those. Oh, Julie says, that's me. I'm intimidated. <laughs> no um, reason, no reason. Mickey, listening while you're taping your jeans together, something good. I will see you this afternoon. Um, everyone's saying, how can anyone be afraid of any machine they buy? Get it out of the box. It won't bite you. Well, and it won't bite you now, but it used to. <laughs> No, it won't bite you. It's awesome. I, you know, at teaching surging through all these years, and I'm sure that some of you are going to agree, I will go to a class and so many people will have bought one maybe at a show and then did not go on to take classes or didn't, you know, resort to YouTube. And then there's, there's their surger. They're like, I don't know how to use it. So I just think it's awesome. And wait till you see more of these samples. Everybody's saying, love it. Love all this. Connie loves her brother's surger. And uh, Arnell loves the idea of metallic thread. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thread. put them in the looper and you're good. To go. Put them in the looper and you're good, good, good to go. Uh, Connie wants to know, Jerry, what did you do with your tails? Not your um, little your tail, but that's a that's a great question. There's you know, there are so many different techniques you could do. A lot of people will just cut off their thread tails and do like a freight check on the end. Or some people use super glue. Um, I like to tuck mine in. I use a big tapestry needle with a really big eye and I just weave them through the threads in the back. And so I just kind of gently pull my tails through those threads and, and bury them and hide them. Very nice. Uh, perfect. All right. So uh, you can keep rolling in your questions for Jerry. I know there's always a 20 second delay, but Kathy Stipe, you're right next to Jerry. So why don't we see what you've got going on? Because you have <laughs> well, this way. <laughs> you have some fabulous items, too, including garments, bags, so many other inspiring things. And she'll also tell you what stitches she's using. So take your notes out, take a notepad. And when you pull open your serger, uh, you'll see in the manual how to do these. So you take I said to Jerry, take it off. I didn't mean literally. I meant take it over. So nobody take it off. We might get, you know, kicked off of Facebook. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anyone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll switch to you guys. There you go. Okay. So I'll start with, um, this is my stitch sampler tote. So if you can see, these are rolled hem pen tucks. So I just used a decorative thread and stitched um, rolled hems evenly spaced. Right next to it going this way is a flat lock stitch. And this is a variegated 12 weight thread that I use to join pieces together. So you can see how I join those two pieces. Mm -hmm. There is a piping foot. So that you stick your cord right underneath the groove of the foot and you can cover your piping or make piping really fast and easy. Um, let's see, I've got a, a sample here where it's not inserted, but it finishes the edge and it trims it to the right seam allowance. So whenever you're going to insert it in between two other pieces of fabric, it's just the right right way to do it if i can go the right way with the camera <laughs> the right way with the right way that's yeah. really pretty kathy and so jerry talked about differential and the differential is what we use for gathering so this is what in the heirloom world they would call a puffing strip but you can use it every day i mean it just it just adds pretty dimension and texture to your 
item that you're doing. And it almost so, looks like like a gathered fabric almost, but not. It is. It yeah. is. It's just a strip of fabric that's gathered on both sides. And whenever you're gathering with your serger using the differential, what you want to do is go to the longest stitch and put your differential as high up as it'll go. And on my serger, it's 2.0. So I just go a stitch length of four and 2.0 for the differential. And there you go. And then for the handles, I just put decorative thread in the upper and lower looper. And this is two pieces of um, batik fabric with a piece of batting in between. So it will go through some thickness. And then on the back, I just made a cross hatch with those rolled hem pin tucks. Just beautiful. And you had no problem with that going over each little section. It looks perfect. I don't see skip stitches and I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Nope. But one of my favorite things to do with a serger is make garments. And um, so one thing that I had always dreamed of making was a little girl's pageant dress. And so finally I had nieces that their mother had them in pageants. <laughs> so let's, so this is just the skirt. It's not the bodice, but do you see all that fluff oh. when it's on a little girl? Oh yeah. So those rolled hems that are on this, and this is just organza. I think there's about nine layers on here, but the rolled hem was done over fishing line. And that oh. helps get that, that little puff. It's so that so is I, one of my favorite things. I don't know. Do any speaking of fishing, any of you else try that? Because that's such a cool look. I remember when I first fun. heard about that. I went into my husband's stash. Uh, I mean, we both fish, but he it's his fishing line <laughs> technically. And I'm like, which one should I choose? And then there's different pound. Like, what what pound, what weight fishing line should you use? Well, I had he came into my office and he's like, What are you doing? I said, I'm tying flies. <laughs> <laughs> I think I fibbed a little, but it's really cool in the serger. Have you guys tried it too? Yeah. Yes, I have. It's, it's wonderful. A lot of fun. Sarah, have you tried it yet? I haven't tried it yet, but that add is it. so cute. So I definitely need add to it to the bucket out. list. It's very <laughs> cute. <laughs> so I had a friend once say to me that your serger Think of your serger and your sewing machine like you would your microwave and your stove. <laughs> so one complements the other. So what I did, this is a, just a little raglan top, raglan sleeve top that I made, but the sleeves were actually embroidered on my luminaire to make it kind of look like lace. Beautiful. And then it's so easy and clean finished with your serger seams. Even the neckband was put on. This particular one I have not hemmed yet because I, and I don't have to, you see that a lot in ready to wear, but I think I will do a three thread narrow hem on this. So you that's a garment. Kathy, you're going to have to bring that back up. And I know there's Wolfpack members in here and they're going to laugh because I never hem my tops. I never have time before the show. So it's kind of, so it, I guess if it's on trend now, we're good. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, it, I, it, gorgeous. It on your neck bands really easily too. Now hold those sleeves back up. I know we're talking surging here, but you said you made those on the Brother Luminaire and I know there's a lot of Brother Luminaire, uh, people in this group and so did is that tool or what did you embroider on it is tool wow and, and then i just place? i just finished the edge with a scallop stitch that was um built in wow that's beautiful absolutely beautiful very nice too bad it doesn't fit at once i got it made <laughs> <laughs> sounds familiar <laughs> 
<laughs> join the sewing club, right? By the time I finished my jeans, I had to, <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> oh gosh, absolutely beautiful. Was that one of those design fills, by the way? It is. Yeah, very nice. For like very nice. So for those of you that have a serger, look on the side of your serger and look for, it depends which serger you have, look for the button that says differential feed. And that's what she was referring to when she was talking about the gathering. Jerry was referring to that. It's differential feed. And you know, the manual for the sergers, the brother sergers are very easy to read. And they even have a few extra things in the back because a lot of the sergers come with extra feet, like the blind hem foot, the gathering foot. Uh, it depends where you got it and what serger you have. But there's a lot of tutorials in there how to do these stitches. Like Jerry was talking about, use decorative threads in there. It might just be a standard three thread narrow overlock, but use some decorative threads. There are the possibilities. You could sit down right now and come back here with us next week and we'd still have more. <laughs> there's a lot. So I like the um, the rolled hem pen tucks with decorative threads. So right now I'm in the process of working on a jacket and this is the front yoke. And that is a sparkly metallic thread that I've used in my upper looper. That's so, beautiful. yeah, I got it on the right side. <laughs> so I just, I think that will be pretty on my jacket. So just a quick question then on that, which is a very easy thing to do. Uh, what do you have in your, you said you've had the decorative thread in your upper looper. What do you have in the lower looper and your needle? Well, because this was a metallic that had black and then multicolors in it, I just put um, black thread in the needle and also black thread for my lower looper. Okay, just standard serger thread? Just standard th serger thread. But, Very you know, the, the decorative threads that Jerry was talking about are so fun. I went into my local craft store, big box store, and I found this pretty spool of thread this past um, weekend. And it, to me, looked on the spool. I really wanted to open it up while I was there, but I decided against that. <laughs> but it feels about like a 12-weight thread. So I haven't had a chance to try this, but I will before next week. Those colors oh, are great. They I are. Just, they were pretty colors, so I just thought I would try it. You know, it's that thread exactly. addiction. Gorgeous. So, Arnell loves your uh, tote. Thank you. <laughs> Julie loves her serger. I know. Once you get used to the serger, you, it, I like the way you said it's like the microwave in the oven. I know how to use the microwave when it uses the oven. So <laughs> we complement each other. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's funny. Everybody say, oh, and piping on a serger. Yes. Yes. It's awesome. Even putting bindings on with a serger. I mean, if you're putting your quilt um together with the serger and there's a lot of quilt as you go um tutorials out there to do a serger piece quilt or serger quilt as you go quilt mm -hmm. and then if you want to find it traditionally what i do is i put my binding on with my serger with a four thread overlock because it does compress those edges but in my lower looper i put a fusible thread oh that's a good idea. So when I turn it over and I press the, I'm pressing the binding down, then I don't have all those pens to stick me as I'm sitting there in front of the TV with stitching my binding on. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. definitely, see, what is a good serger now? Well, since we are, you're on the brother page, we're going to vote for brother and yeah. I, all of us use different ones. So Sarah, you have, what, what do you have behind you there? I have the PS, it's the 3734T. I can never remember if the 34 or the 37 comes first. It's the that PS would be me too. I have the same one. The same one. And Kathy, I think you and I have the same one, the pace setter 5234, which you yep. can pick up, by the way, at your brother dealer. You just call them and they have all of these in stock. Well, I don't know if they have them in stock, but they have them and they can get them for you. And speaking of sergers, I see someone here asking, I want a cover stitch. Which brother is good for this? Well, why don't we move into Kathy Gandy? Because you have some things with cover stitch. And I use this cover stitch CV3550 because it does double cover stitch. I am so into sportswear and decorative stitching. Uh, it does more than that. But that's my favorite. So CV3550 is my 
Dave, I don't know about you guys, but yeah, me too. Yeah. It does a lot. It takes, you know, and I, there are actually really good videos. I'm, I'm going to say they're really good because I put them together. They're on brother's page for the double cover stitch because when that first came out, there wasn't a lot of instruction on how to use. I mean, it was so cool looking, but we weren't really sure like how exactly do you finish the stitches so they don't pop out. And there are little tricks. Once you have those few tricks down pat, you are golden. So yeah. Angela, Andy, I watched, I watched okay. so many of your videos when I was learning how to use my searcher. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> when I went on YouTube and I searched like, for surger videos, it was all of your videos that came up, and I'm like, perfect, I'm gonna learn from Angela. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic, and and you're still like your surger, so I guess I did okay, right, Sarah? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, your videos are great, and I also took Kathy Gandy's advice. She said that you need to sit down, you need to thread it over and over and over again until it's not scary anymore, and that's what I did. You know, that's a really good tip. And also one thing that I learned, and because sometimes I'll be working on one project or I might have two different sergers here, or you go from your serger to your cover stitch and you haven't used them for a while. I leave my manual underneath the mat, like right where each machine is. And that way, if I need to rethread it a certain way and I don't remember how to set up the chain stitch, because if you can remember all of those and how to thread them all the time, you are a genius. <laughs> Yeah, so no, when you all nod and say that you can do that, you are all geniuses. I am not. <laughs> no, we're agreeing with you that no, you have yeah. <laughs> memory. Yes, and I manual think, for the serger is very important. Yeah. So with my manual, I even take, and if I have to adjust my tensions for a different type of fabric, I'll write notes along each stitch type, what my tension was if sewing two pieces of fleece together or, you know, a lightweight, heavyweight fabrics. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I have a book and I, I, I did this in a class and I think it's in my online class. It was almost like a three ring notebook. You can get any width and then you get those plastic sheets, you know, they have the filler mm -hmm. and I just printed off some really pretty, well, I made them pretty, but I just thought with a word document, no affiliation to brother, but just a document. And I wrote like a cute title uh, and then I would write in whatever the stitch was, if it was rolled hem, narrow rolled hem, rolled hem with fishing line. And then down below, I would write left needle, right needle, upper looper, lower looper, all those things that I would fill in the numbers. And again, like you said, tensions, and I would put a sample of the fabric right behind that sheet of paper. That way when I'm flipping and I'm trying to find something, I'm like, that's what I want. And what did I use? <laughs> Great way to save those. All right, Kathy Gandy, uh, speaking of yeah. cover stitch and many other things, you have some pretty cool samples that we'd love to see as well. Yeah. And um, one thing that I wanna say about the serger, I think part of the problem that people see is that the, the threading is one thing, but another thing is adjusting your tensions. With our sewing machine, they back off and the, the tensions on the um, sewing machine are usually set and perfect and wonderful and you don't have to mess with them. But with a serger, that's one thing that is makes your specialty stitches. So you have to adjust your tensions, and they're meant to be adjusted to get your stitch. So you have balanced and unbalanced stitches. You have stitches that meet on the edge, and that's a balanced one. And then when you do the rolled hem, you need to lower your, um, you need to really tighten your lower looper so it pulls that upper th looper thread back to the bottom. So you may have to loosen your upper looper thread and your needle will stay the same. So I think that's a little something that people get a little, you know, confused with too, is that, uh, you know, they do need to adjust their tensions and just smile and adjust them and, and uh, you can see what's gonna be happening. And it's just, it's fun to see and understand the different ways the tensions work. So with a serger, you have your blade, it's gonna cut, so you are sewing on the edge of your fabric at all times. You, you're not gonna be able to sew in the middle of your fabric because you've got your upper and lower looper and your blade cutting. Uh, but with the cover stitch machine, you have a chain looper and it stays below so you can sew in the middle of your fabric. So that's the, the difference, of, one of the main difference, I think, with the chain cover stitch machine and the the serger. Now I'll get on to samples. I'll hush up. Oh no, we love the tip. We love it. <laughs> so this is this is a rag quilt. And what I did was I used the chain stitch 
to stitch my three layers together. Beautiful. So I was able to stitch in the middle of the fabric. And the chain stitch I have found is a lot more stable than your sewing machine stitch. It really is a good, strong stitch. So it, it really works well for this. And then when I stitch the pieces together, let me see. I used, I don't know if you can see that or not, a narrow cover hem and it's variegated thread. So I, I just used a cover hem to sew them together and sewed around the edge with the narrow cover hem to give it a little decorative look there. Wow, that's beautiful. But anyway, it was fun. It How was many fun. layers of fabric? How many layers of fabric do you have there that you surge through? Oh, I just have the, uh, the two layers of flannel and the batting. Okay, so that's pretty, looks good. Yep. And then with the cover stitch, I guess you can't you can't see that very well. The back side not so much. The other side we could earlier okay. though. So this is uh, I sewed all the pieces, the strips together with the chain stitch. These are with the cover stitch, the narrow, just decorative. I put the zipper in with the chain stitch, and then did the the straps with the chain stitch. So it's just really fun that you can do a lot of things with the the cover chain stitch machine and the serger, of course. And the serger, but you know, they, they're both kind of tied in together. But while you're talking about that, I, I know that, and I can see some comments, people are like, what the heck is a chain stitch? I don't even know what that is. Well, actually, I just altered a pair of my jeans that I didn't make, I bought them. And the whole, all the seams were done with the chain stitch, which is really cool because you find one little thing and pop and the whole thing comes off. Right. <laughs> so for those of you that feed your birds or your squirrels outside or maybe your horses or I don't know, Jerry, does your dog eat out of a bag where you have to pull that whole thing off the top? <laughs> no, he actually has food where someone brilliantly put in Velcro at the top. So, oh. <laughs> but it was done with a serger. <laughs> It was done with the serger, hook and loop tape, no affiliation to brother. But right. <laughs> on those bags, are you guys picturing this now? You have that little string at the top. You pull, you have to pull the right end. It always takes me a second to figure out which end. And then the whole thing comes off. It's the best thread remover ever. <laughs> That's what makes it so great for quilting. That's why quilting with a cover stitch is so wonderful. Because if you have to remove a seam, you don't have to, you know, if you have a lot of unstitching you have to do, you don't have to break out your, your seam ripper. You just pull that top thread of the chain and it just releases that whole thing so fast and easy. Yeah. I uh, it, that... It's great because you can lock it if you, uh, treat it the right way at the end. And the only way to get it out is to rip it out from where you stopped. So it won't come out from where you began. And so it'll come out where you stopped. So if you need to rip it out, you can. But if you think your seam is perfect, which we always do perfect seams, you can lock that stitch by pulling the threads forward, clipping them and pulling them to the back. Right. So uh, you don't have to worry about it just popping out if you don't want it to. Right. And also, if it's going into an, a combining seam, you're pretty much... Exactly. You're, you're going to cover it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You have more. I know you have okay. more samples there. So we'll <laughs> go on over to uh, serging. So this is uh, kind of like Kathy's um, purse. And you can see the puffing in the center. Mm -hmm. Now, that was done with the differential feed. So I surged both sides with a differential feed on two, stitch length of four, and then just gave it a little pull like this to give them nice and straight across. So what the differential feed does is a, it's a split feed dog. So the back one is a constant and the front one is gonna either put in more fabric or less fabric. So if you go up to two, it's gonna be twice as much fabric as the back lets out and that gives you your gathers. Or if you're doing a knit, and your knit is waving, and you go, oh, no, I don't want a wavy seam. Use your differential feed, bump it up a little bit, and it will straighten that out because it's feeding in more than the back is letting out. So you'll get a nice flat seam with your knits. Beautiful. That's so a beautiful. Also, I covered the piping and added it to the, to the tooth, the, the ruffle and the other. And then um, to put the lace on, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a, a rolled hem. So I added the lace with the rolled hem. And then, of course, put the zipper in with the serger. Beautiful. 
So there's a lot of different techniques in here. I, I uh, put in uh, the fancy band here, or whatever you want to call it, uh, with the serger too. So it's it's a uh, it's a lot of fun, and it really goes fast and makes a beautiful project. That's like absolutely that pillow is absolutely gorgeous. What were you going to say, Sarah? I was going to say you're so brave for doing a zipper on the serger. That scares me even thinking about that. <laughs> no, no, you have a foot that you just guide that zipper in and it just takes it in and you're good to go. Just buy your zipper longer. Don't don't get the end or the no. Uh, take a breath and you can do it, Sarah. No problem. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorites. You can see that it's been used a lot. And this was all done with a serger. So I... Uh, inserted the zipper with it. And you can see right here, this is a flat lock. So with the flat lock, you have your threads hanging off the edge and then you pull your fabric flat. And with it, I wove my ribbon. This is the needle. So I wove my ribbon under three and over four to give me that look there. And then at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that this is actual surging stitch. So this was the surging side of it, the looper side. And I was able to add the, the lace to the flat lock and pull it flat. So this is all just one piece of fabric using the flat lock. Love that. Wow, that's a really creative that's idea. Cute. And then Very just cute. you did, did the boxed corners. It was really nice. It's, but I've uh, traveled with this a lot. And it's got can see the here's how the zipper you see the well I don't know if you can see the stitching in there or not I've got all my USB Everybody, sticks they're gonna fall all over the place. you want to know what's in that bag it's all my USB sticks that I travel with Sharpie, Sharpies and lip gloss <laughs> well, not long enough for Sharpies Sharpie but I want to do the lip gloss yeah <laughs> But it's, oh, a, it's a great little pouch. I just love it. But I love the, the flat lock and how decorative it can be. Absolutely beautiful. And hey. then um, I did some pajamas for a little girl. And this waistband, now it looks like I had two pieces of fabric here because you can see the seam. But this is a false waistband. So what I did was I folded the fabric back like you fold for a blind hem on your sewing machine. And I surged it. And so let me see if you can, can you see that at all? Go to your right. There you go. So I surged that and cut off part of it. And so it gave, gives me the look of a waistband. Oh, yeah. So you did that with what stitch? Just a four thread. A, a balanced four thread. Well, actually, now that I look at it, it's a balanced three thread. <laughs> I took that one needle. That's beautiful. And then added the lace with the serger at the bottom. And then I did the top. And it's basically the same. You just surged your pieces together. You do this, uh, do the shoulders, put in the sleeve. And, um, well, do the shoulders. Then I went ahead and did the, the decorative stitch on the uh, neckline. Let me see if I can. So oh, that that's is, cool. that's an unspun thread. So it's in the loopers. So it's unsp unspun. So when it gets into your seam, it sort of sp spreads out and really gives you a, a nice filled look because it's not tightly spun. Mm. Wow. And then, um, so then you sew the shoulder seams, you put in the sleeve, then you make it 3D by sewing up the sleeve and the side and then finish it off. So it really is fast and easy. It goes together so quickly. Absolutely gorgeous. Somebody just said, I only think of sergers as finishing seams. Well, if you look at all these samples so far, <laughs> it does so much more, so much more. Yeah, that's uh, when I got my first serger, that's what I got it for. And this was back in the 80s. And um, it was a true four thread. And I don't know if you have seen a true four thread machine. But what it does is it does um, a two thread serging stitch and a two thread chain stitch. So I couldn't do a rolled hem with it because I only had the upper looper, didn't have the lower looper. Oh. And didn't know it, I, you know, I just thought it was a neat machine. And then, <laughs> um, 
but I, it kept messing up. I just couldn't get it to work. I just, I'd take it to the dealer and he'd say, it's just this. And I'd take it home and I, it would work for a couple days and then it wouldn't work again. And I walked into the room one time and there was my two-year-old turning knobs and pushing buttons. And so now I figured out why it wasn't working. <laughs> it was a testing thing for me and I didn't realize it. <laughs> not child proof. Get your hands off those knobs. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Before we move on to Sarah, I think this is a great question. And I know she meant serger. Um, Pebu says, how many types of stitches can a serger do? So, all right, I have a fun game for us. Uh, you start, Kathy, Candy. Uh, okay. One stitch, and we'll keep going around until we run out. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a narrow hem, not a rolled hem, but a narrow hem. Okay. Um, <laughs> pressure. It's a four balance, Tim. I'll start with the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, three or four thread overlock. Well, that was mine. You just took it. <laughs> Sorry. Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah? Uh, rolled hem. A rolled hem. You know, I was uh, flat lock, flat lock. Oh, I love yeah. that flat lock stitch because you can do so much with it. It's for sportswear. It's for decorative. Right. Um, I guess it's not really the stitch name, but something it could do. Like we've got pipe. Oh, okay, shut up. Well, you, you have you have your uh, your forethread. You have the wide and the narrow, either using your uh, right needle or your left needle and then you can use uh, for the wide one you can use two needles so that's your four thread so there's a lot of variations of one stitch very much so very yes. much so. so it all depends on the needle that you want and that's i think something else people look at that and they go oh my goodness all this needles and that but uh you know you have your needles and then you have how your stitches are uh, formed around a stitch finger so you have a wide stitch finger or a narrow one so there's just a lot of um, adjusting that you can do. You don't have to, but it's just fun to play with it and see what stitch you can come up with. And you may come up with something that nobody knows about yet. <laughs> That's true. Well, we were talking, you know, the, some of the surgeries have two thread, um, which I've, I've tried a long time ago, and I guess I just for, forget about it. I mean, and the list goes on. You've got piping. You can put in zippers. I was actually, um, as you guys were talking, I was going through my desk because I've been cleaning stuff out, and I found some of these bags that I did in an old online class. Again, the same thing, the zipper, fun lining, no lip gloss in there, but on the bottom, <laughs> bottom. And then this was my lingerie bag. This was something that I did, um, oh my gosh, I years ago when I was traveling a lot, and you can all attest because you're always traveling, and what happens when the zipper on your suitcase pops? What's the first thing to go down and around <laughs> where all the luggage is? Hmm? Your laundry. Your all of your <laughs> so I made this lingerie bag, and I think I embroidered this with the Dreamweaver. Um, might have been the Dream Machine, I don't know, but I love the letters built in the machine on satin, and actually, there's a bunch of snags on this satin. I've used it so much. And then I put a silk lining on the inside, and I can just st stick all my lingerie in there. Yeah. And, throw these. and then I made a few of these, and then I throw these in the suitcase. So then if my suitcase popped, this is all you saw, and you didn't see a whole <laughs> line of anything that I didn't want on the... <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sounds like that may have happened to you once or twice, Angela. <laughs> uh, it did. And it actually happened to my aunt one time. And the story I won't share here because um, you might spit up your coffee from laughing so hard. But <laughs> if, if she said she was so embarrassed. There's her suitcase. And she said there's just in between every suitcase coming around the band. Well, band was, <laughs> was a pair of her um lingerie. So I thought, you know what? I'm never going to let that happen as long as I live. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Sarah, you have, you're adding another twist to this because you have some really cool gift ideas. I would call them gift ideas for yourself as well, but a whole different variety of things, of little projects that are quick and easy. So I'd love to see these. Yeah. So in addition to Serger Month, it's also Earth Month because Earth Day is at the end of the month. So I focused on scrap fabric projects. I mean, I normally focus on that, whether it's Earth Month or not. But um, <laughs> so I guess the first one I'll show is this really cute knotted headband that I made. Cute. And this is 
literally a rectangle of fabric and it's two seams. So you sew it together in the middle and that lays on the inside of the band. So you don't see that. And then also on the inside, you do some fancy folding and there's one little seam at the front. And so I just serge that closed. So and that's the use... only seam is right there? It's the two seams. Yeah, it's the one in the back. So you, it's a rectangle and then you fold it in half and you stitch the long side. Mm -hmm. And then you do like some fancy folding stuff. And then you end up with one seam in the center. And then when you open it up, it creates the knotted look. I'll That's try it cute. on for you guys. Oh, That's cute. Really Very cute. 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 Yeah. Cute. So I use my stretch fabrics, um, which are very forgiving. So no matter what size head you have, it'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> and I use all different ones. I got my, my shiny spandex. Um, yeah. Very so those, cute. Those are really cute, Sarah. How long do those take to make about? Oh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, we like projects like that. <laughs> really cool. That's like a project if you're getting dressed in the morning and you need an accessory to match. You can just <laughs> make it real quick before you have to leave. <laughs> hey, it's, if it's any size head, Jerry, uh, you could make one for Hercules. Exactly. <laughs> Don't think I haven't just thought of that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, the other scrap fabric thing, uh, when you have leftover like heavyweight cotton or canvas or anything like that, um, I we use a lot in my house uh, heat packs. So this is a heat pack um, that's unfinished. And basically what you do, you can make it any size depending on where you need it for. So like this would be great for your shoulder or your neck. I have a really large one here that would be good for your back. Any shape you want. You just surge around, leaving an opening at the top. And then you just fill that up with rice. And you could get brown rice. If you have rice left over in your house, the cheap stuff, just fill the whole thing up and then you surge it closed. And then you can throw it in the microwave for like a minute and it gets really hot and it's an amazing heat pack. Oh, that just feels good talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have dinner later if you... <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no, not with the rice, Jerry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the last one that I will show is this super cute pouch. And um the person who I found who kind of came up with this idea called it a snack pouch, but you can and I love my snacks, so I'll definitely use these as snack pouches, but you could use them for anything really. And again, it's a rectangle of two different fabrics. So you kind of have your opening here, and then I have a little lining in there. And I put my little label on. So if you want it, if you have small business and you have scrap fabrics and you want to sell these, that's a cute little thing to make. Um, and yeah, so it's a rectangle and you put wrong sides together of your fabric. And then you're going to sew the two short ends and then you just fold it up so i'll kind of demonstrate with my heat pack here so you would sew the top and the bottom and then you fold the bottom up and you fold the other one to kind of close over and that's it so again it's another 10 minute project and you have an easy snack pouch good if you have kids good for grandkids they could take a snack to school and then you just wash it and reuse it that's a great idea so I did it in a couple different fabrics. I have like my teal here. And these are all just scraps that I had laying around. My little roses. So we put that rose, not to put you on the spot, bring that rose one back up. Because yeah. did you, because did you intend to have that pattern match so perfectly? <laughs> are we done just like that? You're like, this only takes a second. Would it take me like half an hour to get that matched up? <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of worked out like it, yeah i saw that it was matching i think i had to cut it a little bit to make it so perfect but yeah God, that's I know, that perfect. worked out very nicely plus <laughs> on that one sarah <laughs> yeah and then this this fabric is kind of cool this was like a fat quarter that i had and there's kind of like snails in there see that that's beautiful oh those are snails yeah <laughs> that's and, cute yeah. 
just a white on the inside there. So yeah, those are my scrap fabric projects. Oh my gosh, so fun. So the questions are rolling in and I know we just have a little bit more time, but I, I, so I can answer a few of these or we can answer a few of these, I should say. Uh, Anne loves your headband idea. Uh, but there were a couple right. questions about the flat lock stitch. Someone said, are you doing the flat lock stitch on the serger or the cover stitch machine? Serger. And it's a stitch that it's very easy to set up. And I'm sure that your manual has it. If not, you can go to Brother's website and download a manual for the serger. I saw somebody saying they had a super old brother serger and there aren't videos. Well, you know, a lot of the sergers are, are kind of the same. So maybe watch some of the other videos and see if you have the same dials. That would be another. With, with the flat lock, what you want to remember is when you fold your fabric or you put your two fabrics together, you want those stitches to hang off the edge. When you get done serging, that's the ugliest stitch you're ever going to see. <laughs> but when you pull it flat, those stitches pull out and go to both sides of the fabric. So you get a really wonderful looking stitch. So you want to make sure that when you're guiding it, you're guiding it so those stitches are formed and half of them are on the fabric and half of them are off. Half the stitches on the fabric and half the stitches off the fabric. Yeah. And Cindy, if you have the blind hem foot that came with your serger, if, if you got one with your serger, that's what I usually use as to keep my fabric in line. And it and you're right. It is the ugliest stitch. I remember the first time I did that, I was like, this is going to be a mess. And then you pull it and it's like magic. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. OK, so um, Julie Ann has a great question, too. Um, we were all talking about the chain stitch. And someone, a few people have asked about this. How did you get the chain stitch down the middle? If you have a knife, is this on the serger? Exactly. Or is it on the cover this, stitch? this is with the cover stitch machine. So when you do a cover stitch, there's no blade or you lower your blade. If, uh, so you, you're not using a blade and it, it can sew in the middle of the fabric because you're not using the blade or the upper looper. You're using a chain looper and it moves differently. The upper and lower looper, move like this. They just go back and forth. But with the chain looper, it moves elliptically around the needles. So it gives a different motion. So it's a whole different kind of looper. So with the cover stitch machine, you're going to use a chain looper in your needles. So you just have the one looper that's always underneath in your needles. So you can sew in the middle of your fabric because you don't have a blade or the upper looper. Does that make any sense? That does make sense. That does make sense. Boy, there's a lot of comments coming in. This is this is fantastic. Are all of you on YouTube? Um, well, you can find me on YouTube if you go to AngelaWolf.com. You can find YouTube. And I saw somebody asking about online classes. Are any of you on YouTube? Sarah, are you on YouTube? No, I'm not on YouTube. Just Instagram at SAVNYC. All right. So by the way, if you're out and about, most of the time you'll find these these four, not usually myself, but these four are traveling all over in Brother Dealers where you get the first like right hands on lessons, which are the best, the best. Uh, I kind of miss those days, but um, I think we're all traveling, starting to travel again, which is really nice. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. So nice. let's see a few more questions here. Oh, hey, Esther. Great to see you. Uh, they love the waistband idea. Love that. Uh, Kelly wants to know about the unspun thread that you had. I don't know if it's like the woolly poly, but what is what was that unspun thread that you were using? Um, oh, gosh. You guys remember the name of that? Yeah, don't, don't mention a brand name, but if you know what the weight or something of that was. Did you it's, say it was 12? It's, 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 if you look for, if you go to a dealer, you're going to see some uh, decorative, uh, that looks like a, is, is that a woolly nylon? Because this is different. Uh, they're going to have a decorative thread section. So if you go in there and look at the dealer's decorative threads for the serger, you're going to see all kinds of fun things. And uh, I believe this, it's a polyester, but it's just a lot of single strands. And it doesn't have any stretch to it. It's just a regular uh, thread that's unspun. Um, but if you go to the dealer and you look at their decorative threads for sergers, uh, if they're, if they do a lot of sergers, you're going to see some really fun threads. That's, yeah. I, and you can experiment and there's, <laughs> Natalie says, oh my gosh, I just looked at my book. There's 17 stitches and I've used two. 
<laughs> yeah, there's definitely time to learn and play. Well, like, did you know your serger can probably uh, attach? Um, I've done little, um, oh, what do you call those? It's a special foot, but, uh, oh, they weren't like beads, but some type of something sure. like that. You can end. do sequins, you can sequins, add beads, sequins. you can add sequins, yeah. you can add all kinds of fun things. Thank you. I could not think of that word. <laughs> oh, yes, you do need to learn these stitches, Angie. They're a lot of fun. Uh, so Michelle wants to know, what stitch did you use to attach the zipper? Um, I used the four thread, I believe. I'll have to look. That's what I use. Yeah, it's, use. it's a balanced four thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, um, so somebody was asking the other day because I make all my own tops and they're like, do you use three thread or four thread overlock? I use four thread most of the time because it's stronger. But sometimes if it's not going to be a seam that gets a lot of stress, I'll just use a three thread. It just sometimes if I'm finishing seams like uh, in my jeans that I'm making right now, I'm using a three thread overlock to finish because I don't need all that thread and it and I don't need it for strength. So there's a lot to learn there, too. Exactly. And, and with your sergers, because... Uh, the needles, the only thing that penetrates your fabric and your upper loop relays on the top and your lower loop relays on the bottom, that's where you get all that wonderful stretch with your stitch. Because you don't have uh, your bobbin and your upper thread interlocking. They're just, they're just laying there having a good time and your needle's holding them together. <laughs> <laughs> it's party time in the surgery. Exactly. <laughs> so, Francie, yes, you have a lingerie bag. Yes, perfect. Pull it out. And uh, Joanne says those make great gifts. They do, and actually everything that you have all shown here would make great gifts. I can think of using some of the fabric, Jerry, that you showed to make some of the stuff that Sarah had. A combination mm -hmm. of all that would be very cool. Of course, I love, yeah. I love metallic. So Angela, uh, I have one more tip that I would like to pass along. Oh, we'd love it. So when you're um, surging and you're using the cone threads, if you notice, after you've surged a lot that your upper and lower looper cones are have a lot less thread on them then the next time you go to re-thread switch those to the needle threads because your needles use a lot less thread than your loopers do that's a good tip, good tip. Yeah. That's a very, what? in fact, that's one of the first things when I had to keep going like this because I was getting cut off by the side. In case you're all wondering, what is she doing? Yoga. <laughs> that's a great tip. And you know, uh, that was the one thing that ran out of my machine was the looper. Uh, the needles would have gone on for a long time. So I always end up switching mine around just to kind of keep it a little even keel. That's a wonderful tip. Yeah. I have a quick one. Sure. Um, a lot of a lot of surging folks are beginners, and I mean this is good for more advanced as well. But especially for beginners, um, Kathy Gandy was talking about you have to adjust your tensions. That's just kind of what you do with the serger. If you use all four, if you're going to do a four thread, if you're going to do all four colors of thread the same, it may be difficult for you to figure out exactly something that may be going wrong. So if you're just starting, get four different colors of thread and then do a test and you will be able to see where the problem is. So whatever the color is, that's the, that's the, if, if the problem is a particular color, that's the thread that you're going to have to adjust your tension on. And it's just easier to see if you use four different colors. Yeah. That makes it so much easier. In fact, even you don't have to be a beginner for that, even on the advanced side, which yeah. I would consider myself somewhere in that area, I will have every once in a while, I'll have an issue where I cannot figure out if it was using a different decorative thread. I can't figure out which one it is that's screwing this up. And I will go ahead and just switch the colors with everything except the ribbon or something like that. And then I can figure out which one it is. That's a great, mm -hmm. great, great tip. Great tip. Oh, hey, Natalie, thank you for sharing this because I saw about 10 people saying that they have the Brothers 1634D and it only came with a handbook at the time, but they went to Brother, downloaded the matching serger techniques manual for her machine, and she's the one that just said that she has 17 stitches. So for those of <laughs> you asking, I knew somebody would take care of that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Great tips. Uh, this has been so much fun. So, you know, it's kind of fun about the sergers. I, I pulled this little bag out as well. This was another one I did a long time ago in a class. And again, a very fun bag. I added the fun silver chains just for 
not that I would carry it anywhere, but you never know. It's still here. And it's like a faux suede. The sergers can go through, you know, a lot of different fabrics. And I think once you start using it, besides just finishing seams, your world's going to be open. So I'm challenging everyone watching. <laughs> Here's your challenge for the month. Last month was quilting. I'm still finishing my skirt. I've been doing it each week. So you can all follow along. Jerry, I'll get there one of these days, but <laughs> a little slow. <laughs> yeah. but this month, I challenge you to pull that serger out of the box and just pick one new thing to try. If it's a rolled hem, if it's a pin tuck, if it's uh, just something cool. And you can go on YouTube. You can search under Brother has a ton of videos. I have a ton of videos. Um, you can pick one and share it. And be sure to use hashtag Brother Sews, Brothers. You don't need Brother Scan and Cut for that, but Brother so is because I would love to see it and see what you're working on. So just one thing. It doesn't have to be a garment. I think Sarah gave you three fun, easy things to do. Definitely. Yeah. And then you could up your game and add a zipper like the Cathy's did and have a fabulous bag. <laughs> yeah, add embroidery. You could, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been so much fun. I'm very excited. Uh, I I, don't, I didn't hear Hercules, though. I'm very disappointed about that. <laughs> he's, he's outside the door. We didn't want him to be disruptive. We love Hercules. <laughs> all right, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. And all of you, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a note for Brother. Tell him how much you enjoy these shows. If there's a topic you'd like for us to cover. We're happy to do it. And um, it's so fun having a panel of such talented people. Thank you for joining. Thank Thanks you. And happy surging, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Happy surging. Oh, happy I like surging. that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.